Hello, welcome to After Image, Corneliu Porumboyu. Um, our After Image Filmmakers and Critics in Conversation series is funded in part by the generous support of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. I've, but I've also had lots of other help with the Porum Boyu series, so I'd like to give some thanks now before we proceed. Um, I would like to thank the Honorary Consulate of Romania, San Francisco, for their support of this series, and our colleagues at the Institute of Slavic, East European, and Eure Eurasian Studies here at UC Berkeley, and also the Center for Russian, East European, and Eurasian Studies, I think I have a typo here, at, at um, Stanford University, but both institutes have been incredibly helpful and really enthusiastic in supporting the visit and, and hosting Porum Boyu in the Bay Area. Last but not least, I would like to thank the Romanian Film Festival at Stanford, Berkeley, and San Francisco State University for their unflagging enthusiasm and support from the moment I pitched the series to them. They were like, yes, we're on board, whatever we can do to help and have been wonderful in helping get the word out and getting posters designed and signed and, and just being supportive on so many different levels. So I'm, I'm really, really grateful to their support. Um, last night I tried to read a quote. I'm going to try to read it again. It was Scott Foundas in, in Variety wrote that Purim Boyu's particular brand of farce is always shot through with the pulse of everyday life and it's Sisyphean struggles. <laughs> it's funny, I, I thought I'd found the missing syllable earlier today, and then when I came into work, it kind of disappeared again, but sort of semi there. And then he goes on to say, he is simply put one of our great contemporary observers of the human comedy. Maybe that's why it turned my reading of the sentence into a comedy. <laughs> anyway. We hope that you will return this Friday, November 16th. Sadly, Poor and Boyu will, won't be with us for that screening, but um, we are showing a 35 millimeter print of When Evening Falls on Bucharest or Metabolism coming up. It's the film in which the source of both struggles and comedy is the process of filmmaking itself, its technical limitations, and all the interpersonal communications that are required in making a feature film. Um, one of the early conversations in the film is about the technical limitations of 35 millimeter filmmaking. So I was super keen on getting a 35 millimeter print and there isn't one in the US. So with the Romanian Film Festival and the aforementioned IEEES at Berkeley, um, we're able to bring a print here for you to see. So it's a rare opportunity, don't miss it. Um, but today we're here for Infinite Football it's the only documentary I'm showing in our Porum Boyu series, but its tone and themes are consistent with the other films in the series. Um, Giovanni Marcini Camia in Sight and Sound says it's hilarious and heartbreaking, a playful exploration of the titular sport's philosophical figurative potential, which is a great summation of it because she sort of teases out some of the, the themes that are there. Um, but for me, Infinite football plays out like a, a modern day Romanian Don Quixote. And I think that you'll, when you see the film, you will see, see what I mean by that. But since we have Porum Boyu here to speak with us after the screening, I won't say much more. But please join me in welcoming Corneliu Porum Boyu. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for, for being here in this beautiful day. Um, and uh, thank you, Kate. And uh, OK, we will watch the film and we'll speak uh, right after it. Uh, I will be here for the Q&A. Thank you. So I'll, I'll open up to the Q&A quite quickly, but I just wanted to ask one question to start, which was in, in your fiction films, which share a lot of the themes and concerns that come through in this film, you're, everything's scripted, everything's prepared and written, you know what's gonna happen. So 
did you know what was going to happen when you were preparing this film and and how is that different a different way of working and uh, no i think what i knew i knew uh, if, when i was speaking with laurentio i was interested more in the history of uh, the sport how he developed how he tried to uh, I, I didn't want to know a lot of things about the rules. I uh, I said, okay, this I will uh, I will talk it there in front of the camera with him. So I knew more, yeah, general things, the, the history in the back, you know, yeah, that he tries to get in states and he didn't succeed and uh, yeah. And how is that a different kind of storytelling? Is that for you the difference between documentary and fiction film? not knowing what you're going to do, what you're going to find? It, it was the project, it was like, like a, yeah, like a certain type of research, you know, so uh, I said, okay, it's, it's better not to script it because maybe I will lose some time, some, uh, some uh, yeah, maybe some freshness, uh, something uh, uh, authentic maybe, and uh, I said, okay, I will... Uh, I will uh, I will take a very small team. That means two ca two cameras and sound engineer. So if it will be a film, it will be a film. If I will be happy, it won't, it won't be any 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 film. So great. Uh, questions from the audience. There's one right here, and then one over here. Uh, thank you, <clears throat> thank you very much for the movie. Um, I was thinking two things as I was watching the movie. Uh, one is, uh, you know, the way that Marx talks about how people make history, men make history, but not in the way that they want to, uh, and the way that he talks about the need to make history consciously. Um, the other thing I was thinking was how um, sophisticated Marxists uh, make fun of um, the working people's interest in sports. Uh, they think of sports as a sort of opiate for the masses. Um, and in this movie, you have this extraordinarily decent man um, who is trying to make history consciously and to make it in a domain that he loves and that he's familiar with, which is the domain of, of soccer, football. And um, I, I thought it was just really marvelous the way that um, these themes are intertwined and that there's this larger background to his project and his dream, which is to, to balance rules and freedom and, and to make history conscious, consciously. Um, anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, question over here, Patrick. Try turning it on. Is it on? Hey, thanks a bunch for being here and <clears throat> sharing your awesome films with us this weekend. Um, so watching all of so many of your films in a row these past few days, uh, it's clear that yeah, like rules is a recurring theme, like the rules of language, the rules of law, the rules of sport, and. Um, bending the rules or getting around them and the way that we negotiate sort of and find our humanity around these questions of when is a rule a good rule and when is it a rule that we should bend and when do we need different rules? How do you think about rules and breaking them in relation to your own uh, evolving and always innovative filmmaking practice? Um. I don't know. For me, the first uh, first is the subject, and after that, I'm mean, I'm trying to get the uh, know the cinema. It's a matter of uh, what you say and wh how you say it. You know, so uh, I'm trying to 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 get at my each film a certain uh, the this question how to say it to be more the most expressive that I and uh, uh, close to my to my own. Uh, my own vision, you know. So I'm trying not to have rules, you know, not to. De it's depending a lot the subject by its own. But but do you have any specific rules that you set for certain projects? Any limitations that you set yourself? Yes, of 
for for a uh, few of the project yes mm -hmm. i had that and what kind of limitations do you set uh, sometimes it's depending on the mise en scene there are some limitation also that they are given by the by the uh, budget of the film so things like that but uh, uh, it's hard for me to talk uh, in general because for me each project it's uh, I'm I'm trying to make this uh, it's unique mm -hmm. so uh, when I'm doing a project I'm trying to do my best in that particular moment mm -hmm. uh, this question here and then oh there's one here first is it on um, watching your um, character there I had two 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 themes came up to my mind. One was um, psychotherapy. Um, I had the feeling that this man was going back to to this coming out of his powerlessness, trying to kind of make up for some sort of uh, perceived uh, misfortune. Fortune. And the other one was entrepreneurship. I'm thinking, you know, were you born matters? Because maybe if he was born here. Or he, if he managed to emigrate, you know, maybe more people would think that is not a utopia; is actually a, um, an authentic solution. Uh, what he proposes, you know. And I was wondering, do you, did you ever have the feeling while f while talking to him that you're more or less like a psychotherapist? No, uh, no, because I know him very. Uh, I know him. My mother; she was uh, uh, the best friend of her. His mother, uh, his brother, he he's one of my uh, my best friends. So I know him from childhood. For me, Laurenti is Laurenti, you know. So uh, I never think at that. And he's uh, he's someone that he's uh, he's very curious. He was all the time curious. Maybe he's he's searching in a wrong direction. That it would be a, <laughs> a discussion. But uh, on the other hand, uh, I know him, and I never no no I know him for a long time. I never. Uh, it's like, yeah, it's like a cousin in a way. No? No, this question here, and then I think there's oh, hi. In there. Uh, thank you for uh, for the film. I didn't I didn't know you you made another one this year. Um, I'm just curious because I think a lot of a lot of the I was reading the translation at the same time while listening to what they're saying, and I think a lot got lost in the translation. To be honest. But uh, I'm just curious, did you ever have to like retake things? Because, I mean, I, I know you know this guy well, but by any standards, if you've lived in Romania, this guy is peculiar. Like, it's, he's, he's a bit weird. Like, it's, it's, um, like, it's just, I was, I was very uncomfortable in moments. And I guess that's what you want to transmit. But did you ever, like, somebody in the camera crew started cracking up or something? Or just starting asking what is happening? Or... Did, did ever 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 happen? Yeah, we have situations like that. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, he's he's in a yeah he's special let's say. But uh, uh, I think all of us we are a little bit weird in our own way, you know. So uh, of course the guys from the team when you when you try to fight with the soccer, you know, is like to reinvent. The, it's they look at you and they think, are you crazy or well but uh, we we finished the film <laughs> a question over here um i want to talk about or have you talk about your involvement in the film as the person doing the interviews your reactions have an impact on him or on the subject and i'm just wondering if you were aware that during the interview um, because if you said, for example, oh, that's a great idea, or I just don't get it, <laughs> um, will change the outcome, the interaction, and therefore the outcome of the film in a way. Uh, of course, of course, it's... Um, first, I was choosing to... Uh, I, I had two options, but I, at the end, I said uh, that I will, uh, I will be in the frame after... We try in the beginning that lesson on uh, the fir the third scene in the film with uh, with the uh, when he explained me the, the 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 sport and there it was very uncomfortable o of course i was thinking also uh back home that 
there I will have two solutions. And I said, okay, let's go, and I will get into the frame, and I will keep it like that. It was yeah a functional solution for that. And of course, after that, all it's uh, uh, he, because in a way he was trying to get a certain type of approval, approval, no, from from my part, you know. But in the same time, it's the rest like a dialogue. So, uh, of course, I was aware of that. And uh, it's also my first time for me when I'm doing that. So I think sometimes I'm quite uh, uh, stupid. <laughs> but uh, we, yeah, I said, OK, it will we'll go like that, of course. And of course, because he was thinking, and he didn't speak with many people about this sport. So as uh, this sport, many people, um, so a lot of people around him, they, they, uh, they said, okay, uh, we are not interested in. So for him, it was, um, uh, it was important to share, you know. And at the end of the day, I said to him, okay, let's try to do that. And that, and uh, it's not about a matter here if it's good or not your sport. At the end of the day, it's about to to share it, you know. Good evening, everybody. Um, I will, first of all, I uh, just uh, had been frustrated yesterday that I did not have a chance to intervene with uh, a comment regarding uh, the yesterday's movie. And I just want to make a reference of that. Um, we, uh, my wife, um, our daughter, and myself, we have been uh, on uh, witness of the events of uh, um, revolution of uh, Romania, being uh, in that place uh, live in uh, starting December 21st in the University Plaza when Ceausescu did not uh, yet uh, had been uh, gone. And uh, of course, uh, just uh, to comment a little bit about this, I just want to mention to, to as a witness of this event, things that people do not know, even those, unless those who have been there in uh, uh, those afternoon in uh, December 21st, has been sung for the first time, the current national anthem of Romania, which has been written on the uh, Faculty of Geography with uh, big letters uh, in a, a green color. And people, this is, has, it's an image I vividly remember, has been a very first time for the people who has been there in the University Plaza of Bucharest singing uh, the Romanian anthem before it has been become, it had begun the Romanian anthem. This is what I want to mention. Uh, but now coming uh, to the subject of uh, this film, I just want to mention uh, the fact that we uh, uh, we are immigrants, which may, can be uh, very easy to understand. We came in this country only in the summer of 1990 immediately after the coal miners, uh, so-called Mineriada in the uh, summer of 1990. And uh, to make the long story short, uh, um, my wife uh, had got an invitation to a um, Congress of Chemistry in uh, Montreal. And uh, overnight, she just uh, succeeded to make uh, passports for uh, myself and our, our daughter uh, in order to immigrate in the United States. Uh, I just want to mention that our uh, situation has become uh, qualified that uh, being uh, uh, good but not great, despite the fact that <laughs> we could die in the in the ninety in the in the, uh, the afternoon of the. 21st and uh, December of 1990, when uh, people have been killed on the street. And things are not known exactly 
by those who were not there. And uh, but uh, let alone uh, this aspect, uh, just coming back to to the movie that uh, you presented to us, I just want to uh, tell that uh, uh, I have been personally affected by the 9/11 event, working at that time at uh, SFOK8 in the United Airlines um, as an um, uh, analyst programmer. And uh, I witnessed uh, from uh, uh, on that date uh, uh, exactly how things went when the the, the towers had been uh, destroyed by the terrorists. And but this is another story which I don't want to uh, to mention to you. But just I noticed that even the even the situation of the main character of yours had been. Uh, affected by that, uh, by that situation of 9-11 because who could not come uh, to find a job in the United States. Uh, that is perfectly understandable. But uh, of course, uh, I have been prepared that not want to, to retain attention with all other things in, in our lives. I just want to tell you that we came in this country, we are happy being here, and all in all, uh, I could say that uh, uh, the only regret we have is I did not, we did, could not come earlier. I, we, I have been in a, about uh, the age of 50. And my, now my question for you is how, uh, how did you uh, succeed to correlate all this uh, 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 well, I didn't. Yeah. What was interesting? It was his story, personal story, and his destiny in a way. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, for me, uh, speaking about the sport and how he tried to, okay. and and how he tried to, how he invent the sport and how he tries to, uh, because it's uh, how he said at one point. Uh, f in a way, for me, in the beginning, I perceived him, him like a sort of a, an artist because. He had some things in his life. He had some barriers, and after that, he 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 put all this into his uh, opera, you know, in his uh, work, you know. So, uh, in a way, I was at yeah, but I was interested in his personal story and personal history, and how he he was the big history influence in a way his destiny. So uh, uh, all these elements and all these. Um, things that they were happening in his life he tries to uh, to uh, transfer in a way in 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 his uh, in his uh, sport was there one over here yeah to me the thing that really made it the most interesting was his injury and how it, that seemed like what made it more than just someone with kind of a, a fantasy. Did you know about the injury? And was that something that made you think about the film or? Uh, no, in the beginning I didn't know about the, when I started to talk about him, of course, about the sport, he told me I was injured once, after that twice, and I saw that how, how this, in fact, this injury changed his life, you know, so. Uh, of course, it was. Uh, I knew about that when I started to shoot. Of course, and uh, uh, he told me all this. Yeah, all this uh, story uh, related with that. But was that what made you want to make the film, or had did you want to make the film even before you knew that? No, of course I. Uh, no, uh, Laurenzo. He told me like ten years ago that he's trying to. At one point when I was, uh, because he's living in my hometown, I, I'm, I'm not going there very often. And uh, like 10 years ago, he told me, you know, I'm working on a sport. I want to change uh, the soccer game. And I said, OK, good luck. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, because it's, uh, I'm a very, uh, I'm a fan. I was playing soccer when I was a kid. So, uh, and uh, years after, like 10 years after, I was, uh, uh, his brother Florin, he came here, he's living in London, 
and uh, when he's coming back home, uh, every time he's passing to, to, and we see each other. And he told me, okay, Laurenzo, he still continued to work on his sport. And I said, what? Uh, because for me at that time, and, uh, and I said, what sport? And we, we talk a little bit and I realized that in fact, it's a certain type of obsession behind, you know, if you work like years and years or something, it's more than, it was obvious for me that it was something more than a sport. Uh, to change a sport like that, so the ne next day I was uh, I called him and uh, we start to speak about we, just, uh, we start to speak about uh, the sport and uh, how the history. After that, I uh, we we changed some emails and uh, uh, and that was the yeah. Um, I was interested in his use of the word colleague to describe people that, that he had many different kinds of relationships with, like teammates, classmates, um, co-workers in the shop, co-workers at his current job. Um, is it a feature of the language that the word colleague is so flexible, or is it a, um, a feature of his generation, maybe, or is it something particular to him? film when Laurentiu uh, has his monologue how much of that is related to uh, the last referendum in Romania with all this revival of a sort of fanatical uh, right-wing orthodox movement because he talks about for instance how these ancient Greek words which had, which had an original philosophical meaning that was entirely different because they belong to Stoicism or Cynicism or something else, were then reappropriated and recycled through Christianity, right? And given a more violent interpretation in a way. So was that him sort of pointing out at that, or was it your contribution? No, 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 not at all. It was him. Okay. I knew about this story, and we tried to shoot about this story then he uh, he uh, he told me before that he he went to to search for the paidea metanoia the 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 right that he had this question well um that it was i think in his when he was 25 in this period he he uh, i knew about that and after that i think we were i choose the option when i was shooting uh when i was shooting the documentary there on the spot, I felt I felt for that for him it was very important. This uh, uh, when he was returning home, you know, by his own this lo moment of lo loneliness, specific moment. I don't know when he returned, home. and I and I talked with my DOP, and I I said at that time I need I want to shoot a shot to reproduce in a way this long journey that he had it, you know. So he find this technical solution anyway, and I had this shot. And after that, I, I spoke with him like two hours uh, and I edit a little bit uh, what is in the end, you know, uh, this uh, this talk, but this dialogue, but it was his obsession in a way, you know, and I knew about that. So uh, uh, I never, in, to, in the film, what I did at one point, we, I think we do, uh, I we repeat, I think, to, to we repeat in a way that uh, we, uh, in the first scene, I think, uh, when we are together on the on the uh, skating glass, uh, uh, we did it twice. That you know, but the rest of the situations, I tried to. In the beginning, I was thinking what I would, what I would talk with him, what subject, in which location. So I tried to be more, uh, yeah, very open with that, you know. Uh, so no, no, it's not at all. I didn't give him any la um, any text and all. No, no, not at all. Question here. Uh, 
Uh, first, I want to thank Pacific Film Archive for uh, inviting Cornelio here, and I hope that uh, other people from uh, the Romanian New Wave will be invited as well. I wanted to ask a question uh, about um, your style of the of the whole uh, movement, because uh, I feel like there's a lot of similarities with uh, Christy uh, Puyu and Christian Mungiru's films, especially in your early work. And I was wondering if you guys got together and, and decided consciously to start this kind of movement, or how, how exactly did that work, or what was your decision? If, and if there is a group like that anymore, if, or you're doing things differently now? So, uh, no, it was the, uh, yeah, we never talked about that or that, let's go, let's make a movement, <laughs> no, no, not, not at all. Uh, no, uh, I think what I, uh, an important element, there were two films very important, I think, for this generation. One is the reconstruction of Lucian Pintilier, which is, I think, a milestone in a Romanian cinema. And the second one, it was the Money and the Stuff, the first uh, film of Christy Puyo. Uh, it's a film made in 2002. And these two films, uh, this film also, I, I was a student at that time when I saw it and I, it really impressed me. And uh, I think these two influence uh, in a way uh, me and the other directors. Uh, I think also maybe the reconstruction is, uh, uh, let's say, the, a very, very important uh, film in, uh, I consider for for me and my colleagues, you know, and otherwise I think each one did his uh, his own work at the end, because uh, I think uh, maybe sometimes there, are I, I me like filmmaker I see quite different a lot of differences in between these projects and uh, between directors and the projects also you know so uh, maybe a certain type of atmosphere maybe a certain type of subjects. Mm, you know, in a way, but here, there also, I think they are quite different. You know, the films, um, maybe, and the fact that all these movies they were come out in a short period of time, and uh, it's more like a give this uh, definition. You know, it's not something programmatic behind us. It's not like a dogma or uh, uh, ninety five or uh, to have some rules or to have some uh, some uh, uh, ideology behind you know question here and then this, can you hear me i have two questions uh, the first is i will be here friday night but regrettably when your last film in the series is shown you won't be could you kind of give us some something of a heads up about uh, your uh, take on the, this film this Friday when evening falls on Bucharest? Uh, drink a lot of the coffee before. <laughs> <laughs> there are some long, long shots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard to... It's hard to uh, well, I'm going to come. <laughs> it, it sells itself. You've done very well. My second question is... Um, now, how do you how long does it take you to conceive of and then make a film and what are the next two or three films that you're working on now i mean the i just finished the editing for my next film uh and that project took me like 40 years so it's a project that i worked for long four years because in fact I was writing a few drafts before in between other projects, but I uh, I work at that project four years except this time that when I made the documentary, so uh, a few a few months. So it's a project that I uh, I work for a long time. There are projects that I poly police adjective also I work like three years maybe. Uh, so this I did it in six months with shooting, editing, and all. There are different, you know, different. Uh, I can say that I have a standard, you know, uh, working time. You know. And if I may, one more. Um, how, how much time do you have to spend raising the money to get the films made? Depends also on the budget. Uh, 
for the normally for a fiction film it took it takes like two two years maybe two years but of course when i have a draft the second draft maybe uh, for example at the last film i i think i did like eight drafts but when i had the second and i was quite happy with i start the f uh, financials because uh, you know i'm changing in the, when i'm happy a little bit about the the writing and the subject and the the, the script i already start the financing and but i uh, knowing that i work in between you know because after that it's no at that one it took three years maybe so i'm doing i'm trying to to start with the financing and i'm all i will work also on the script go back and forth because it, it takes in Europe, it takes a, quite a long time because we have to apply to different. Uh, uh, my last film into yeah, it would be like we have Romanian National Center of Cinema. We have also Arte France, Arte Germany, some Swedish found. So, uh, being a certain an industry where you have to apply to different centers, takes a lot of time because each uh, uh, each uh, center has his own uh, procedure or. Any other questions? There's one here, and then one at the back. Uh, just a quick question. How surprised were you by the result of the documentary uh, compared to what you had in mind when you started knowing the guy and everything? And also just another small question. Uh, like in that movie, in the documentary, you, you are on the other side of the camera. How did that feel? And was that your normal? Uh, type of conversation that you had with Laurentiu or were you kind of like trying to steer him in one way or another? Um, being in front of the camera, yeah, I didn't feel in the beginning uh, very comfortable, of course. And uh, but uh, after that, I was, I was trying to forget and to go to, to speak. Of course, sometimes I have like I felt it OK is there. So but uh, I we we talk long t for each scene that you were saw it we we speak a lot more time so we try to we try to i try to to get into you know to to forget about but it's quite di difficult that that's for sure and um uh, yeah i didn't i don't know maybe i will make another f another documentary in a few years about football with my football team I, so i started to like it Ah, uh, there was there were a few scenes uh, that really uh, is the scene that he when he repeats the rehearsal. You know, it's uh, it's something I think uh, it's great in a way, and it's also the scene uh, when he speaks about Superman and uh, th this moment, particular moment. So there are a few things that uh, I, um, uh, there are a few things like like in fictions that I made. I think I think if you have like filmmaker, if you have a few moments of grace, you know, or something that it's beyond, uh, I'm feeling happy, you know, even when I, because think in fiction also, I'm working, I and maybe I, I write like say seven, eight uh, drafts of the script, but I'm happy when I get something that uh, really deep with me, my actors, you know, so uh, I had, for these moments I was, of course, when I was doing there, and I and I said that they were happening, I said, they were, uh, yeah, I, I was very very happy. You know, you know. Is there one up here? Uh, first of all, congratulations for the film. Uh, this was quite different than all the other ones that we've seen. Um, well, I was curious, what's happening in the title sequence with all the colors exploding in there? Uh, that's, uh, in fact, that that, that was, um, uh, I don't know the word in, uh, in English. Uh, generic. I mean, I like it. I think it comes after that whole dual shot, monochrome, mm -hmm. and then you have all those colors on the screen it, it's quite a shift in the mood uh, I was wondering if you'd like to talk a bit about that that, that was a, this type of garden paradise or something that for me it resonate in a way with what he was w wanted to do before the accident you know that he wants to be in the forest and to see so in a way I found that 
uh, peace uh, and uh, I wait. I felt it to put it there, you know, because also it's like um, quite. It's uh, it doesn't have deepness, you know. It's very and this plan and with these colors in a way like uh, also resonate in a way with uh, with the cave, you know, a certain type of. So I like that. Uh, I felt it like uh, yeah. I felt to have something. You know, like that there in the end. Was there a question? Alina, did you have a question? There's, can, oh, but here first. Hi. Thank you. Hello. I'm just curious, um, what was Laurentius' reaction when he saw the movie first? Uh, he likes it, he likes it. And uh, 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 after that, we, we, we went with the film in Berlin, in Forum, and he was really, and now he's traveling quite, quite a lot in festivals. And uh, what is good that uh, a lot of the festivals, they organize a game for uh, for him, you know? So uh, he's changing again some things, but uh, he's very, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's speaking with the people about uh, his arguing or not, about his rules. And uh, yeah, I think now he's in Seville where uh, uh, where uh, two teams of uh, women's teams, they will play again. Thank you. Thank you. So th this was amazing and surprising in, in several ways for me. Um, somebody mentioned the different emotions that, or reactions that we might have when we watch Laura and you. Right, because he doesn't seem to be quite your regular everyday person, individual, and you cannot cringe a little bit. So I, Errol Morris came to my mind, and I was thinking of Errol Morris's portraits that, to me, have the same effect. You know, I cringe, and I'm not sure exactly where he's going, and I cannot help but be fascinated, and then feel guilty for my fascination. And I, I know that he loves his subjects, but what you do which is yet another surprise, you insert yourself in more than just being present there in front of the camera, but bringing that amazing photograph that it's also an echo of the wedding photograph of Laura and you. So to me, or I shouldn't say that, I, I should ask you, to what extent is this film also about your relationship with him and also a little bit autobiographical, if there is? There is because I insist a lot to shoot in to film in his father's apartment where it was a place that uh, where I, I was going when I was a child. But after that, the story with the photo it was it uh, it came from uh, from out nowhere, you know, because he's and I I think I'm very confused there. You could see it on the screen because he's uh, when but it was a certain type of exchange in the same time, you know. So uh, I didn't expect. That happens. It was happening. We were filmed that. So after that, I uh, I introduced it in the in the film because for me it was yeah it was also in that part of the film. It, you see that it's uh, I think it's um, we know each other for a long time and uh, and uh, from the beginning I think I I I made this film with a certain dose of nostalgia for uh, for my my child my uh, yeah for my uh, child uh, period and uh, it, it has that from the beginning, you know. Yeah. So do we have time maybe for one last question? Anybody? Okay, then I'll I'll ask if if Laurentiu is Don Quixote, are you Sancho Panza? <laughs> if he's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if I will play that sport, yes, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all your time here and thank you. your Th wonderful film. Thank you very much for uh, for your invitation. <laughs> for me, it was quite. Uh, thank you that you are coming. I'm quite young for a on a retrospective. I'm just forty three, but uh, uh, I hope, like maybe in. Uh, 20 years. <laughs>
I would came over there. Yeah, <laughs> I'll we'll come back. We'll keep having them. We'll keep having them. Thank hopefully. you. Thank you very much. For, Thank you. For,